Hey everybody, it's Eric from ECAutos.com, your libertarian car guy, and I'm headed down to the gym in the 2016 Volkswagen Jetta, poor Volkswagen. Um, as I'm driving along here, a couple of days left in August, and uh, Volkswagen still has not been given permission by the government uh, to resume sales of TDI-powered Volkswagens, including uh, the TDI-powered Jetta, and it doesn't look like they're going to get permission, and at this point, even if they did get permission, it's almost August, uh, we're very close to fall, um, which means we're close to the 2017 model year, and uh, those 2016s that have been sitting around on docks and in the backs of dealers' lots for the last eight months or so are effectively used cars at this point, and even if Uncle deigned to give his permission to sell them, um, they'd have to be sold at a discount, um, and of course that factors into the horrific hit that Volkswagen's rep has taken as a result of this ridiculous cheating scandal, which by the way is like me cheating a radar trap up ahead by using my Valentine 1 radar detector. Um, the regular media won't tell you, but I will. Uh, this business about the tailpipe exhaust uh, cheating is much ado about nothing. Uh, you're talking about a very fractional, very small increase in emissions on an arbitrary government test. Uh, diesels are not dirty. Uh, you hear all sorts of hysterical talk uh, on the, the news um, about the mayhem and death uh, that these things are causing, but it's interesting to observe um, that not a single actual victim has been produced. And to put this in some perspective for you, um, while the uh, affected model that um, VW uh, cheated the tests on uh, would not be compliant with current standards, go back about eight, nine, ten years, and they would have been compliant with the standards in effect at that time. And can anybody out there show me anybody who was hurt by, say, circa model year 2005, six diesel-powered cars? Um, it's all computer modeling and hypothetical risk. Uh, nobody has actually been hurt, um, as opposed to, for example, the government-mandated mandated airbags, which minimally, recently, have killed at least, I think the count is 12 people so far have been killed uh, by the defective Takata airbags that, Volk, uh, that the government isn't nearly as upset about uh, as these cheating diesels. Um, the other sad thing is that uh, as a result of this scandal, even if Uncle did give permission, um, it looks like Volkswagen's not bringing them back regardless. Um, Volkswagen Group North America uh, CEO told automotive, automotive, uh, excuse me, automotive News um, a couple of days ago that uh, basically they've decided to really dial back on the number of diesels that they offer in the United States, and that's just a, a real shame. Uh, and of course, we never got access to the Euro-spec Jetta, uh, which differs from the American-spec Jetta, which is available with a different TDI engine, a 1.6-liter TDI, uh, smaller than the uh, formerly available in the U.S. 2.0-liter TDI. And in Europe, um, the 1.6 engine gets 60-something miles per gallon, just to give you a sense of what we're missing out on, courtesy of our ridiculous regulations in this country. Um, but it's not all dark news. Um, kind of in lieu of the TDI, uh, Volkswagen has put into the lineup, actually it's now standard, a uh, smaller 1.4-liter gas engine. It's the standard engine in the Jetta now. Uh, it's turbocharged, um, and it makes pretty decent power, much more power actually than the previously standard 2-liter not turbocharged gas engine that was the standard engine. Um, I think it's 150 horsepower now versus 115. And it knocks literally a couple of seconds, a couple of seconds, not like half a second or a quarter of a second, several seconds off the uh, car's 0 to 60 time, which is now about 9 seconds. And the mileage is really good. Um, it's not quite as good as the TDI, but it's within about 6 to 8 miles per gallon overall. Um, close to the TDI, and here's the thing, um, the sticker price of the base Jetta is about $4,000 less than what Volkswagen was charging for the TDI Jetta when it was last available. So if you factor out that $4,000 price difference and factor in the, uh, you know, the, the slight TDI advantage, it probably works out uh, in the long run that the 1.4 engine is about the same in terms of what you'll spend on it. Um, the next up engine is uh, the 1.8 liter uh, TSI gas engine. There's also a 2 liter gas engine, which is basically the same engine that's in the GTI. And by the way, the 1.8 and the 2.0 engine are also 
pretty much the same engines that you find in the Audi A3 and the Audi A4. Um, one of the things that's interesting and kind of cool about Volkswagen is that it's the only bread and butter brand, modestly priced mainstream brand, that's basically reselling luxury cars, uh, that is Audis. I mean, they're not exact rebadges or exact, uh, uh, exactly the same cars, but they share drivetrains, they share suspension tuning, they share a lot of things. Um, so you're really getting kind of an Audi in drag for less money when you buy a Volkswagen, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, in addition to the 1.4, the 1.8, and the 2.0 engine, there's also a hybrid. Uh, it uses the 1.4 engine with electric motor and battery pack. And it duplicates the performance of the uh, 1.8 engine, but the mileage is in the mid-high 40s, so comparable to the TDI. However, uh, the price of the hybrid is about $31,000, and while I admire it from a technological point of view, uh, I think that unless gas prices double, um, it's hard to make any kind of economic case for that hybrid. Uh, you're looking at a, a what, $13,000, I think, price difference uh, for the hybrid versus the base Jetta with the 1.4 engine, and it's going to take you a long time to work off uh, that $13,000 in uh, fuel savings. What else? Okay, uh, there's a new touchscreen, uh, new apps this year, and um, those pretty much account for all of the major changes to the car uh, for 2016. Um, there's more of that uh, information available uh, on the site, ptautos.com, where you'll find the hard copy review, or the digital copy review, I guess, as they say. Oh, oh the final thing that I wanted to mention, I haven't had my coffee today. I guess the, the big sell of the Jetta, other than formerly available TDI and the newly available 1.4 is that uh, although it's pretty much a compact car, a uh, compact sedan in terms of its overall footprint, uh, if you dig into the specs you will discover that front seat and rear seat legroom is about the same as you'd get in something like a Toyota Camry which is a mid-sized car uh, and this car actually has a large trunk, same trunk uh, in terms of cubic feet as the Camry but it's nearly a foot um, shorter overall, uh, which I like. It means that you know there's a lot more space in your garage and it's easier to slot into curbside parking. Um, so uh, there's that to take into consideration. If you look at other cars that are about the same size overall as this thing, like the Chevy Cruze, for example, uh, you'll find that typically the back seat is significantly tighter legroom-wise by usually several inches. Uh, so that's all I can think of at the moment. Haven't had enough coffee yet, um, but there's more up at epautos.com. Um, hope you'll stop by, and thanks for viewing, and we will catch up with you on the flip.